injuries, injuries, injuries. That's the story in FPL at the moment. And you might well be tempted to hit the wildcard button. If you are, I've got a draft for you. Starting off then with the goalkeepers and defenders. And I've got to say, goalkeeper wise, there aren't really many that are outstanding to me. And for me, I think it makes sense to go with the two cheapest possible you can. And Ariola and Dubravka, I think, tick that box. Ariola is actually the top goalkeeper according to Draft Hand for expected points in Game Week 21. The fixture against Sheffield United, West Ham heavily back to keep a clean sheet in that fixture. So I think it makes sense to go with him and start him. And then you've got Dubravka on your bench if you ever want to start him. I feel like Newcastle, obviously they've not been performing well defensively in recent times, but you know I can't believe that a team will just regress from being one of the best defences in the league to being one of the worst without a reason behind it. And I think it's down to tiredness and injuries, to be honest. And I really do think with the little period of rest they've had between cup games and the fact they've just beaten Sunderland, I do feel like Newcastle will get a bit better defensively, which is why I've picked both Dubravka and Trippier because I think they'll do well, basically, towards the end of the season. Saliba, Porro and Estupinian are the three defenders I'm going to start for Game Week 21. I think it makes total sense. Saliba now to start for Arsenal. He's probably my favourite of all the Arsenal defenders just because you know he's going to play every week. Pedro Porro is the best defender in the game for expected goal involvement. You can see here he tops all of the other defenders. Trippier, he's not even as, you know, he's better than Trippier and Trippier is still in the team as well, don't forget. Estupinian is my third defender. Just going back to that list. He doesn't actually appear on the top defenders for expected goal involvement, but he's missed half the season, basically. So that's why he doesn't appear on that list. I do think he's better than Lewis Dunk, who you did see on that list. So with that in mind, I think it makes sense to go for him. And Brighton have a really nice fixture running coming up. And the whole narrative was they didn't keep a clean sheet all season. I do feel their expected goals conceded was reasonable. I think you can consider them decent to keep clean sheets for the next few fixtures. Wolves, Luton and Crystal Palace... I reckon there's one or two clean sheets mixed in there, as well as, hopefully, some attacking returns for Estupinian as well. Charlie Taylor, I'm just going to talk about him quickly. He's a bit of an injury doubt for Game Week 21, but he's 3.94 million. I think it makes sense to go with him. He's probably the best defender at that price point, with exception of Gusto. If you fancy Gusto, go for him. You know, slightly more attacking, but probably a little bit less nailed. Looking then at the midfield, and I definitely say with the injuries in international competitions, it's gotten a lot easier to select a midfield in FPL at the moment. Palmer, Saka, Richarlison, Foden and Gross are the ones that I've gone for. I think if Haaland doesn't start in game week 21, Palmer is by far and away the best captain. Draft Town have him as the leading player for expected points in game week 21. Saka, I think, just picks himself really. He's great on the right wing for Arsenal. I know he hasn't got Huge returns so far this season, but I just think he's so reliable for starts, takes penalties, and he will just always chip away with returns. And I think based on the returns he's got last season as well, he's got a big enough sample size to suggest he's a really good FPL option. I do like Richarlison as well. I think I've decided to start him over Pascal Gross. I just think he offers a little bit more attacking upside, especially the fact that I think he's going to take penalties for Spurs. Spurs always seem to do well against Man United as well, or at least score goals against them. Question marks, of course, on how Spurs are going to play and how many returns Richarlison is going to get without Son in the team. But I think yeah, he's too good not to start, in my opinion. Foden, he's the second best player for expected points in game week 21. One thing I would say with Foden, with KDB and Haaland back, question marks as to how many minutes he's going to get. It's why I picked Gross on the bench for this team. You can always start Gross when you don't think Foden is going to play or you know, vice versa, although Gross is pretty nailed in that Brighton team. I would say, though, it does create a bit of a benching headache. There are three really good forwards in this team who you probably want to start every week. So if you want to reduce that benching headache, and it might actually make it a bit easier to get Salah back in. You could reduce Pascal Gross to someone like Garnacho. Just bench Garnacho week on week and play Phil Foden. But of course, that comes with the risk of minutes. I also put together a list of other midfield options in the game. So I've excluded Bowen, Salah and Son for obvious reasons. I'm not going to talk through it in great detail, but if you disagree with some of the picks that I've made in my team, there might be some new players in here you might not have thought about that you might want to go for instead. I've ranked them by expected returns per 90. That's my personal favourite underlying number to assess a player by. So you can probably see some names there that you might not have thought of. And yeah, let me know if you want to stick any of these in instead of the players I've gone for. 
Forwards then, and I think it's worth taking a risk on Erling Haaland, or at least risk picking him in the team. You don't necessarily have to make him your captain, but I think picking him in the team is worthwhile, particularly if you have someone like Gross on the bench who can easily cover for him if he doesn't start. I just think if you're on your wild card, you have a chance to get Haaland in your team without using a free transfer. And players that want to buy him in future game weeks will have to use a valuable free transfer which you will have in the bank. So I think you can use your wildcard as a bit of an advantage in this regard. Although if you don't fancy Haaland, just stick Alvarez in. I, th I think Alvarez will do you nicely, at least for game week 21. But I think, personally, if you're on the wildcard, it may well be worth the risk. And of course, if Haaland starts, he's got zero expected points according to draft time because they don't expect him to start. But if he does start, I think he's the best captain. Watkins and Solanke. Watkins is a hell of a lot more expensive in the game at the moment than he appears on my team. Just one thing to say about these budgets as well. They appear as my budgets in FPL. So I've had Watkins all season, so he's worth this in my team at the moment. But he might be a bit more expensive to buy for you. One thing I would say, there's plenty of cash in the bank for this team. In fact, we can have a look here. Plenty of cash in the bank for the team. I've actually left a question mark on it because we don't know how much cash in the bank you'll have. But in my build, I've left, I think, well over $2 million in the bank with this team. And I think there are plenty of opportunities to save a bit of cash downgrade Trippier for example pick someone cheaper than Gross yeah to make the team you know viable for you but I think pretty much anyone watching this video should be able to afford this team 51.1 expected points in game week 21 that's of course Haaland is the captain with zero points say I don't know his expected point sits around eight or nine that seems to be where he is most weeks if you add that doubled onto the team what's that 68 69 points i think that's a really good game week in store and definitely a team that's set up for the long term all right and that's the end of the video quick little look at my latest wildcard draft i thought it'd be worth updating it given all the injuries and news we've had come out ahead of the game week 21 deadline if you enjoyed the video let me know by leaving a like rating also let me know in the comments if you'd make any different picks to what i've done and if you enjoyed the video and want to stick around please subscribe to the golden gold channel which is just there and I'll catch you on the deadline stream Friday afternoon.